Okay, howdy. Uh, it's uh, Monday morning, May 4th. Well, almost morning. It's 11.42. Eating my crackers. I actually went racing this weekend at Bradenton Motorsport Park. Only made two runs, but went from A to B, so brand new bike. Anyway, I'm going to give you the quick version of Lathe G-Code. Let's see. If you see and see production guys and your uh, the first shift guys, here we got the homework assignment right here. Lathe workbook. These are the uh, X and Z coordinates. So we're looking at the lathe part right, right here. Is the X X is the center, always the center, and Z could be the front, usually the front. It kind of applies the milling. A lot of us like to make it the top, but occasionally they don't. So, <laughs> all right, only it's like tilted sideways. You know, we're not up and down. We're this way. So. The biggest thing you got to remember on this is right here, diameter, not radius. And it's made to make it easier for you. So if you look at this blueprint, so if this is X0, everything above here is going to be a positive number. And we don't machine down here, the tool only goes up here. This is like lay, this is spinning. So this coordinate right here where I get my cursor would be X 1.5. So you don't have to cut it in half. It's, it literally moved half of that, 0.75, but it's, it's reading in diameter. The only trick comes in is when you see these, uh, these uh, settings on a print that are actually all, only on one side. You got to add them together. So this is 0 0.25 by 45 degrees. So therefore, if you know print reading, that means they're equally sided. So it's 0 0.25 in this direction and 0 0.25 in that direction. So if you do your math, I usually get a little pencil out and I write down all my coordinates. Only these are X and Z, not X and Y. So, all right. So this one right here, I wish I could draw this thing, would be X minus 0.25 times 2, two sides. That would be 0.500. So this would be X 1.0 and Z0. And this one would be X 1.5, but Z is 1 to 1, 1 to 1 ratio. It's 2 to 1 ratio on the diameter, but not on the length. So this would be Z minus 0.25. So in these cases here, these are that's a chamfer. These are, that's a straight line. And you got to go up here a little bit. And you got actually a, a point right here. 0.4 is the beginning of the radius. It's going to go around the corner. And we need to get to the end here. So this, the, this is X 2.0 right, right up here. So, you fill in these points, you scan the sheet, you send it to me. Okay. This one a little more difficult. This is real basic, just to get you. This thing here has got uh, one, two, three, where was it? All right, so we go back and in, in, uh, this is just the page for the uh, lesson. So let's go into the big book here, the big book. It's an older workbook. They used to call them SL lathe, slant lathe. 30 would be bigger than a 10. And you go through the book here. You try to sell your machines right here. Okay. This is the coordinate system. This is the Z and the X. This is the turret, they call it. And the, when you get down here, this is U, operator. I really wish they just just say machinist. I honestly never remember the quadrant numbers, but I know where all my X's and Z's are. So this is Z, this is X. This is positive, that's negative. That's positive, that's negative. Okay. 
machine home, which is, if this is where the spindle is, the home would be up here. So to get to here would be the coordinates like Z and X. If you saw my uh, setup uh, school demo. So this is home and this is where the part is, right? Absolute and incremental programming. So in mill, it's G90 or G91. They don't do that in the lathe. It's actually simpler. If it's X or Z, it's absolute. If it's U or W, it's incremental. And you're not going to really use it that much, but we can get into that talk later. There's a little description right here. It's like if you went, this is Z, Z direction. So if we need to go to right about here, it'd be Z minus 3.75. And this is 625, but you could do an incremental movement, which means I don't really care where this is. I'm going to move from here to here, and I'm going to use W. But this is a, so if I move backwards, that will be positive. Positive to the right and negative to the left. Not really that descriptive on that. You could intermingle the moves, by the way. You can, uh, G01, which is linear, line. This is an incremental move, and this is an absolute move. So you can have a combo of that. And the other big thing is the feed rate in a lathe is always in inches per revolution. It's going to be a very small number, and that's pretty much equivalent to the chip load per tooth on a mill. But you have more teeth on mill. Lathe, you got one tooth, one cutting tool. So it actually makes it easier to program. You just use the feed per tooth number. And it always will do that. So it's not inches per minute. All right, here's your lathe chuck. Chuck clamping the part. Zero is in the middle and front, right? And here's the setup, and then there's your sheet right there. Your sheet, and we go to this one, right? So this one is just just more X's and Z's. you got to figure out where that is. That is, it's, it's a curve here, so you got to figure out where that is. Curve. Little line, angle, line, drop down, over, up. You, honestly, you really can't do this with a tool. You'd have to use a separate tool. But anyway. All right, so we go to this one, and they're just saying point to point, right? And some of these are in parentheses. What I believe they're trying to do is it's not required to put the Z down if the Z didn't change. So you don't have to put that down. I would put it down anyway. You'll, you're going to learn how to do shortcuts. This is like less typing. So Okay, so programming with codes. Programming format. You can read that. This is a sample of a program. And I told you that lesson before. But I like to have a little sample of the program. This book is an excellent sample of program book. So if you forget, you can kind of review this and go, oh, I remember how it goes. Example of a program's first couple of lines. And I'll give you the real quickie version here. You're going to see this term, constant surface speed without constant surface speed. All right, I'm going to make it simpler. Constant surface speed I call SFM mode, which means it's going to change the RPM based on the surface speed per minute. Without constant surface speed is just going to be RPM, RPM mode. So you notice right here, this line right here on line N14 says G97, and it's got an S, like spindle speed, and M3, which would be normal direction, right? And down here it says G96 S315. Why do they have two? This is RPM mode, or no, no constant surface speed. So this is running at 650 RPM. And then it's going to rapidly move to this position, turn the coolant on, and then they're going to switch up and say, we're going to run with SFM. This is surface feet per minute, not RPM. It's going to change RPM depending on diameter. So it'll speed up and slow down. This one is just RPM. And the only time you'd ever use that, tools that are on the middle, like drilling, reamers, taps, 
and also external or internal threading. So, but this is a good practice right up here. This is a G2080 is a go home command. So go home, and this this is a tool change command right here. You don't use M6 in a lathe. They you have 15 you, minutes left of computer time. Always get kicked off this thing. It's saying tool one offset one, and this one is called a uh, I call it the rev limiter. Well, they might call it spindle clamp. It's kind of a weird term, but in other words, no matter what happens, don't go above this RPM, 2800. There's various reasons why I'd want to do that. Like, it just spinning fast and making a lot of noise. Uh, the bar is rattling in the tube, or you are, you're, you're using a big chuck, and it's trying to unclamp itself from centrifugal force. So there's a lot of reasons why I'd want to limit the RPM. Like the ST10 that we have can go 6,000 RPM, and you might want want it to go that fast at times. All right, so this is an example. And this is a little quick reading right here. A safe startup line, and a, a, let's see, he has the G97 thing, G40. Some of these are similar to the mill ones, so these are the often, these are the most commonly used ones. So it's got rapid, it's got linear, it's got arcs, home, cut of compensation, spindle speed max RPM, the rev limiter. And these are called can cycles. This is for finishing and this is for roughing. These are probably the two most common ones, these right here. Then you got threading, you do a lot of threading on a lathe usually. And you got your standard drill cycles. And right here, constant surface speed on, constant surface speed scan, cancel. Just remember, one's RPM mode and one's SFM mode. And we're running in G99, that's the default. We're running in feed per revolution. You're gonna very rarely run feed per minute in a, in a lathe. And these are a common M codes right here. And they're pretty much the same. Spindle, it's not clockwise, kind of clockwise. It's like normal direction in reverse. So we're usually running an M3 all the time. Cooling on and off, end of program and sub sub programming. All right, program structure. This is an example of a program with all the descriptions on the side. Both books have it. You got your O and program number up here. So it's O three zeros one eight, starting with a percent sign. So if you're typing these offline, you, you need to put the percent sign in. If you're in the control, you do not need to do that. That's only for communication. And this would be program number, and that's a semicolon, which we call end of block, EOB. And if you put this line up on this line, it'll actually read it in the library. So here is right, G28, return machine to zero for tool change, because it's gonna rotate the turret wherever it is, and it might run right over something. So that would be like a safe place to change tools. It's going to change the tool, and we're going to use offset one. And right here it says, it says clamp at 2600. So this is the rev limiter. We're saying right off the bat, don't go above 2600. Okay. Let's get the spindle turning in RPM mode. So it's going to 414. It's kind of an odd number. I, I, whatever. It doesn't really matter at this point. Okay. We're going to rapidly move to this position, which would be 3.6 and Z.1. Let's go back to the picture here. I'm just, I hope to give you a little description of what's the best I can do right now. So, if this was two inches, right, and this is zero, 3.6 would be up here somewhere, right? Imagine this is stock, raw material. And if I went to, uh, I'm up here somewhere, right? And I'm at positive Z, so I'm rapidly coming down, whoop, right to about there. Then I decide what to do. It's sort of like the mill where you bring the tool, you position over and you bring the tool down. Only We only have two axes, so we're going to rapidly come down and then decide what we're going to do. All right. Let's go back to this example right here. All right, so this setting at this position right here. Then we switch it up. Surface feed per minute, or 
constant surface speed. I can't remember that one. Then we're going to wrap it from this Z to this Z, which would be pretty close to the front. And then we're going to travel towards the middle, only on a lathe because of the radius of the tool. You have to overshoot the middle just a little bit. You Later have 10 on, minutes left of computer time. Okay. Later on, I will I'll, I'll show you exactly what that means. As the insert tools do not have a sharp tip. So, so that's a facing move. And then when you're done getting to the middle, you need to retract. So we can retract and go back to where we came from, right? Won't hit anything. And then we're going to turn on the roughing cycle. This is actually, it looks like a lot, but this is pretty cool. This says, I'm going to rough the part depending on the geometry. And where's the geometry? So it says P10Q20. It's, let's see, right, we got to look for that, where it says N10, right there, N10. This is the geometry. So it says P means start at the first line number with 10, N10. And we're going to end at Q20. So we go down to here, it is 20, right there, 20. So that'll be your profile. And that kind of brings you back to... Way back to this. This would be your profile. So your N number 10 and N number 20 would be every all the X and Z's in between. So if you're roughing, you need to, oops, let's go back to here. You're gonna chop away and you got to use the boundary as your limit, right? And we don't want to finish it. You know, we're going to, this is roughing. So this is kind of where incremental comes in. U says U is, U, V, and W are equal to X, Y, and Z. So we're only using U and W, which would be X and Z. So U would be positive 10. So you're going to stay away 10 thousandths on the X and 5 thousandths on the Z. So we're going to leave a little bit of extra. And this is a depth command. How much am I taking on each cut? This is 100 thousandths, and this is my feed per revolution. 10 thousandths per revolution. And it's going to follow all this here, and when it's done, it, this one's programmed, and I do it the same way. We go back to RPM mode, shut the coolant off, go home, and this is optional stop. Done. Then we just bring up the finishing tool, and all this should look kind of the same, other than it's a different tool, T202, finishing tool. Similar RPM, but this one isn't really in effect. It's really this one's going to do all the cutting. So it wraps to its start position, and it's going to face the front. And then this G70 here is a finishing cycle. And it says P10Q20 without all that other mumbo jumbo at the end. It's actually going to go back to here and read this and cut it to finish with no roughing. Done. And this is a drilling operation. So this one is X0 is the middle. That's where you're going to drill. G83 is a peck drilling cycle. It's going to go two and a half deep. 300 thou per peck. It's going to stop 100 thou off the front, the R. But the only big difference is the feed rate. We're not in inches per minute. We're in inches per revolution. And then we, we're done, we, we wrap it to the top of the hole, shut off the stroll cycle, go home. And some people use this command at the end. This means tool one with no offset. I, I, I don't really need to do that. Won't hurt. Uh, and M30's end the program, done. So that's like rough, rough finish drill. That's pretty standard. All right, I'm gonna cut it short there. I'm at 20 minutes. So that's really a basic start of simple lathe programming. And it, lathe manual programming is, I think, pretty simple. And you can make a lot of parts without going to the, into the cam. Probably couldn't make like fancy uh, uh, lathe parts like this. I mean, uh, if you're trying to make a, uh, you know, a chess set, you know, I, I would, I'd be in the fusion programming and that stuff. but. If you have the coordinates of the profile, because you know, you're looking at them this way, that's really how it's going to be machined. Um, 
Uh, the pawn that we make in school, I, I did that at Mastercam, but some of the other stuff we do, or the NIMS projects are manually programmed. And actually the NIMS lathe project is is killer easy. It's really easy. Okay. So that's the end of my Haas workbook. You have five minutes left of computer time. Okay. Right. So we're doing a... Uh, this is just X and Z coordinates, so you get the, you know, gist of where everything goes. And this is just a layout. You can see the little cutting tool there, right? It's not writing a whole program. It's just writing a section of the program. And this is absolute programming, which is all X's and Z's. And this is incremental programming. So, in other words, if to go from 2 to 3, which, which would be what? Which would be... 13? Uh, U and W, right? U and W. This is just a U move. That's U and W. That's just a W. W minus. So U and W, in this case, line 23 would be how far am I going in this direction? Just remember it's thinking in diameter. So if I go back to. Oh, here it is. 250. So it's U is 0.5 positive and the W is negative and that would be minus 0.25 because it's diameter on the X and actual in the Z and that's pretty much it. Once you get a handle on that that's it's pretty easy so that's the only stumbling block is you're doubling up on the diameters but you're doing one to one on the, on the Z's. Okay 21 minutes. I'm going to stop this and send this off so Get those done, scan them, and uh, return them. I might actually put it as an assignment so you can just send it that way. Probably would be better. Then I could track it better. Okay. And hopefully you've done some uh, fusion lathe stuff, which honestly I got to do that too. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.